from defeat unto victory somebody that is feeling discomfort hearing the word of god is afraid the pastor is touching areas that will disturb him the holy ghost will find you out and if you're a sinner you'll be exposed backslider you'll be exposed you will not distract us here but the lord the holy ghost will distract your life and the holy ghost will turn the such light upon your life and if you're one of the acorns in the church the lord will root you out every plant my heavenly father has not planted in this holiness church the lord will uproot them in jesus name few the few that be saved and the few that be sanctified and the few that be faithful i pray that god will make you as one of those faithful people in jesus name we're looking at first peter chapter 3 first peter chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 20 first peter chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 20 here here it says in verse 20 first peter chapter 3 here in verse 20 it says which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of god waited in the days of noah while the ark was a preparing wherein few you see that time of noah few 120 years waiting for the flood to come few were in few that is eight souls were saved eight souls were saved all those many years Noah the preacher of righteousness he emphasized repentance he emphasized righteousness he emphasized coming out coming out of their sin and coming out into righteousness do you see for those many years only eight saved few that be saved is it like that today that there are people who are hearing the word and instead of being saved instead of being committed to the lord they're still living in their sin I pray God will bring you to repentance because if you don't repent damnation will come if you don't repent doom will come if you don't repent it will be an eternity in the lake of fire hell fire we're looking at Revelation chapter 3 Revelation chapter 3 I'm reading here from verse 1 it says unto the angel of the church in Sadi is right these things says he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven and the seven stars I know thy works that thou hast a name that thou livest and art tell me tell me out loud dead no so have a name that they live and yet they are dead no so have a name that they are saved and yet they're still in their sins no so have a name that they're going to heaven and the power of righteousness is not in their lives they cannot live a righteous life they cannot live an obedient life they cannot live a holy life they have a name that they live but they are dead look at verse 4 it says thou hast a few names even in studies which have not defiled their garments they shall walk with me white for they are worthy only few only few that was a name that was a few inside it i pray you'll be among the few those who are saved those who have the savior as their lord 
those who are on their way to heaven those who say by the grace of God I know what it takes what it takes to get to heaven what it takes to be in paradise what it takes to be with the Lord forever and ever I know it takes repentance I know it takes faith in the Lord Jesus Christ I know it takes righteousness I know it takes holiness without which no man shall see the Lord and I volunteer myself I give myself I give my heart I give my life I want to be among the faithful few the Lord will give you grace point number two purposeful perseverance by consecrated few purposeful perseverance by the consecrated few when you hear about consecration that means giving yourself without reservation unto the Lord giving your heart without reservation unto the Lord that means giving your skill everything you've got without any reservation unto the Lord that you say he gave up everything for me and because he didn't reserve anything he shed his blood all his blood when he threw the spear at his side blood came out water came out all the blood had been drained out of him that's why water came out after the last drop of blood that came he gave his whole life he gave he gave his whole blood and he gave everything and because he gave everything for me that's why I give him back my heart without reservation I give back to him my life without reservation I give back to him my skill without reservation I give my ability back to him without reservation I give my knowledge to him without reservation I give my strength unto him without reservation that's what it means the consecrated few and there are few people look at all the churches around and look at all the people that go to assemblies and fellowships and camp meetings and and conventions and retreats and whatever and you'll find they're not going there to discover what can I give to the Lord more of my life more of my skill more of my ability they're not going there to ask what can I give what can I get what can I have what how will the pastor pray for me how would I build a house how will I have a car how will I get married how will I have this that's what they are going for and it's a pity that's why some people are here what can I get what can you give you've got enough what can you give now how can you sacrifice your time your life everything you've got to serve the Lord second Samuel chapter 24 second samuel chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 24 second samuel chapter 24 and we're reading from verse 24 look at what it says and the king said unto aaron nay but i will surely buy each of thee at a price look up here Believers was looking for free, free, free things. Worship free. Blessing free. The energy of others serve me free. I'm here. I need this, I need that free other people's time free 
they do not want to lay any sin on the altar there are few that will say see what christ has done for me i am going to lay everything down and it's like just let me have just let me have just let me have and at there look up here preachers that don't pay tithes and offering are there leaders who don't pay tithes and offering are there workers who don't pay tithe and offering are there members of the church who don't pay their tithes and offering and they come and they are the first people to claim this blessing and claim that blessing and claim that blessing and use of the time of everybody I want to see the GS. I want to see the pastor. I want to see the group pastor. I want to see overseer. I want to see. I want to see. But we cannot see you and get you committed. What kind of Christian is this? Only few. The few people who say, I lay my life on the line. I want to serve the Lord. I'm not looking for this or looking for that. All I want is to say I can serve the Lord more. Here is David saying in verse 24, And the king said unto our honor, Nay, but I will surely buy each of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which cost me nothing neither will i offer any seed to my lord that cost me nothing do you remember that the people in the sanctuary in the temple they were giving offering and rich men came and he gave. And look at this poor widow. She came and she gave. Look at Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. I'm a Christian. Check up. I'm a servant of God. Check up. I'm committed to the Lord in this our church. Check up. Luke chapter 21, verse 1. And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites and he said of a truth I say unto you that this poor widow has cast in more than they all church who is talking here I want to hear you. Who is talking here? You know, there are people that read only one verse of the Bible. And when they read that verse, they hold on to that verse, they don't understand. Recently, we read about David. And David consecrated his life. Here was Goliath, a national enemy. Here was Goliath, the champion of the Philistines. He came out. He said, I defy the armies of Israel. If anybody comes out there, and he fights against me and he wins we will be your servant 
in his mind he was thinking that nobody will come out because Saul was afraid all the army became afraid he came out again for 40 days he was coming out and saying I defy the armies of Israel let somebody come out from there and David had that and David said I'll put my life in my hand and then you know the story he fought and he killed Goliath do you know that story I'm talking to you do you know that story the following chapter the women were happy the women were excited in affirmation of the call of David in affirmation of the covenant with David in affirmation of the commission given to David those women came out and they sang and they said David has killed his tens of thousands and Saul has killed his thousands and there are people the only get out of the story is that you know those women should not have made any comparison and they told us our teachers let's be very careful when somebody no matter how good no matter how consecrated no matter how he gives his life and he throws his life away to save the church or save the nation let nobody ever talk about it look at these women and see now and they envy of Saul that's all the lessons some people learned from there listen I read that story I knew that story and I've been going to various churches deeper life here in Lagos at the headquarters and I see here look at church building what the people in this group you have done very well this is great I hope that you will complete this and when you finish we're going to come over there for revival deep and live holy ghost has shaking revival this is good and I spoke about that to appreciate what they have done in that group I get to another place and I told them the first time I got there I said ah, we've been here for so many years more than 20 years look at where we are when I got there two weeks after wonderful everything that changed and then when I saw something good I said this is great if you can do this in two weeks in one year you will do much more and then somebody there inside said what's the just doing is appreciating the people that build and the people that give and the people that sacrifice I about the other people and they have been there for 15 years and they have not built anything will they not feel ashamed I hope they feel ashamed I pray they feel ashamed I intend they feel ashamed I purpose that they feel ashamed will they not feel ashamed why is the pastor pressing the people that do well didn't he didn't he remember that when those women sang then Saul became angry of course I remember I thought you are not like Saul somebody there are you still at home I thought you are not like Saul I thought to still safe. Saul did not have the Spirit of God anymore. The Spirit of God had left him. And the spirit of the devil, of Satan, occupied him and possessed him. I thought you were different. I thought you rejoice with those who rejoice. I thought you are going to say, this is a challenge for me. 
See what that district has done. See what that group has done. And the pastor has spoken about that. We're going to give our lives. We're going to give everything we have. I thought it would be an encouragement to you. Look at Jesus here. Jesus is our pattern. Not those women. Not those women. Look at Jesus here. He saw the people giving offering into the treasury. And he looked up. And he saw the rich men. And he saw what they gave. And then he saw the poor widow having two mites. For her life's income. All that she had. 100%. And she gave it. And look at this. Verse 3. And he said of a truth. Openly. And he said... I say unto you that this poor widow has cast in more than they all. For all these have of their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God. But she of her penury, of her poverty, has cast in all the living that she had that's jesus christ and we follow after jesus we we'll see somebody making a sacrifice giving her strength giving his strength sacrificially we we'll see some of our workers some of our leaders we're almost tempted to say brother you need rest you're doing too much we're almost tempted to say, let others come and help us carry the load along with this sister. You're doing too much. And then others are just laid back. There's nothing. Only few that are giving their totality. You will join them today. I said you will join them today. And when we see that, we commend them. We appreciate them. And it is the appreciation of Christ himself. You know, it is the people that want to hide under stinginess, hard-heartedness. And they don't want to change as it was, so it is, and so it will ever be. They're building their own houses. They're building two houses. They have a house over here, and they have another house over there in another place. And they send their children overseas uh, to college. And it's so costly. And yet, they accept to worship in a ramshackle building. And those people alone by themselves, if they were like David, if they were like this poor widow, they could raise up a magnificent building there all alone by themselves. Only few people who are com consecrated and committed and thank God you are among the faithful few I said you are among the faithful few welcome to point number three point number three is the propelling power the propelling power of the commissioned few propelling power of the commissioned few. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. We're reading from verse 37. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Think about the whole of the nation of Israel. They were in their millions and Jesus had 12. What will 12 people do? Very few. But those people, few of them, they were propelled by the power of the Holy Ghost. Chapter 10 verse 1. And when he had called unto him the disciples, few, few, Propelled by power. Come to Luke chapter 10. Luke.
chapter 10 the commissioned few the propelling power of the commissioned few Luke chapter 10 verse 1 after these things after the Lord had sent the 12 he saw that the field was still white for harvest after these things the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Now said he seventy, and he's still saying they're few. And as we look at the work the Lord has for us, you know there are people that they're doing the particular work. The territory is expanding. The harvest is so great. We have millions and millions and millions of people that need to be touched, but. They don't want to bring in others to say as we are so we are jesus at the 12 in luke chapter 9 and now you had the 70 in luke chapter 10 even after having the 70 he said was still few but these are people that are propelling power that they will not be tired and you will not be tired you will not be weary these are people like Gideon's army you know the story of Gideon he made the call 32,000 came out the Lord said the too many tell them whoever is afraid let him go back 22,000 went back it remains 10,000. The Lord said, there's still too many. These ones are looking for easy life. These ones are looking for what's in it for me. These ones are looking for what can I get out of this. Bring them to the water side. I'll try them for you. I'll test them for you. And then those who bench down and drank and drank, say, go aside. And those who put their hands to the water and they lapsed the water like dogs 300 said those are the men god is looking for a few good men faithful men focused men fervent men the people that will say the only thing that matters to us is the work of the lord in judges chapter 7 verse 7 and the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. Let all the other people go, every man unto his place. Faithful few. You'll be among the faithful few. The focused few. You'll be among the focus few in Jesus' name. He has given us a task. He has given us a work. He has given us a commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. There's a lot to be done. And the people who are willing to sink every energy into the work of the Lord, the Lord is calling upon you today. And the people that will say, Here am I, Lord. Send me. The Lord will send you and you'll be a great instrument to the hand of the Lord in this generation in Jesus' name. Are you there? Are you one of the few? Are you focused? Are you willing to take up the baton and preach the word of God and stand for righteousness even if everybody around you is compromising? Why don't you stand up and tell the Lord, I will be among the faithful few among the focused few, among the fervent few, 
among the few good men and women that God is looking for today. Stand up and present yourself before the Lord and say, Lord, I will, I will. Whatever challenges are there, I will overcome. I will serve the Lord and consecrate my life to the Lord without reservation. Especially our church. Call upon the name of the Lord. That God will use you. You will not be tired. I'll be telling you all. It's just like we have not done the building committee. We have not been sitting down. We have not been sitting down very well. There's a lot of way. We need to task ourselves for the project. My brother, brother, my dear sister, are you going to complain? Listen to what Pastor said. I'm telling you, we will build the we, we, we will build the we will, we will build the we will build the house. And God is going to use you. God is going to use me. Take it as it's a challenge. Determine in your mind every month how much are you going to be paying for the building project of the church. And it will not affect your offering, it will not affect your tithe. The more you are giving, the more God is going to be open way. Part of it, you children, you are part of it. Whenever you have anything that comes in, 10% of it, bring it to the house of the Lord. If we are faithful on all these small things, we will be surprised that God is going to be the house for us. Keep thinking, how can we do it? What way can we do it? The church of the Lord needs to be built. You are not going to be tired. But that will be the legacy you are going to give that when we started the Palai Bible Church in Charlotte Fee, this is what God used us to do. Call upon the name of the Lord. God will empower you. God will empower me. The grace of the Lord will be sufficient for everyone for you. But for every one of us, God has used for this Easter retreat. Call upon the name of the Lord that God will empower you more. Pray for my family, especially the mother of the house, that by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, the grace of the Lord will continue to be upon you. Anything that will be a, anything that will be a stopping block, knowingly or unknowingly, as she put all her life online. But the growth of the Lord of the world, of the, of, or the growth of the word of the Lord, that thing God will remove in the name of Jesus Christ. No matter how small it is, that will be a stumbling block. And all our efforts in growing the church of the, of the in growing the church, that by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God will go to reward her abundantly. Let's pray for a labor family. That God has been setting them down and putting them a, 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 a legacy that can never be forgotten in the history, in the deeper life Bible church, Charlotte history. About the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God will not forget them. God will wipe away their tears. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, they will love. The joy of the Lord will continue to be their strength. When they enter house, it will be blessing. When they go out, it will be blessing. The left side of their of their life will be blessing. The right of it will be blessing. 
they will not be tired. The wind of word will not take them by the power and the blood of Jesus. More revelation of God. God will continue to reveal to them in Jesus' name. The cross is so heavy that Jesus Christ himself, it was very, very heavy for him. He carried it, he wanted to fall. And he called upon the name of the Lord. He said, God, take this cup, let it go over me, if possible. If, God, if, that, if that cross is too heavy for Jesus Christ, you should know that that cross you are carrying is too heavy for you. But call upon the name of the Lord. The grace will be sufficient. You will run the race to the end. Your flesh will not condemn you. People will not condemn you. Your past will not condemn you. Your present will not condemn you. Association with the word of the Lord will not put you to shame. The grace to be able to carry the cross to the end, God will give to you. Let pray for other member, our brother that's supposed to be here. About the power and the blood of Jesus, right? New dimension. He will be seeing the Lord. And the God will be priority. As God has given him a lot of talent, a lot of gifts, it is now for him to realize that a Christian without God is nothing. And a Christian without God, the journey is always short. Let's call upon the name of the Lord that God will uphold him. Pray for me, especially, and need your and need wisdom, and need knowledge, and need understanding. In, 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 in a way to be a good leader, the Almighty God should give to me in the name of Jesus Christ. Call upon the name of the Lord on my behalf. My family, I will have decided. That whatever it's going to cost, the work of the law will not lag behind. Along the way, we need to fill our family. God has been so faithful to us, but in many ways, we still believe we need more. Call upon the name of the Lord. That God will surprise us. When God surprises us, when people ask for we say, what's our, we don't need to tell them. They will see everything and they will know that our God is good. Call upon the name of the Lord for our tomorrow journey. God will give us a safe journey. Let's praise the name of the Lord because of answering our answer, answering our request on the sister, uh, our sister and our brother that's following us. By the power and the Lord Jesus Christ, by the time we all of us will come back, we will come back with joy. God will renew your strength. The joy of the Lord will continue to be your strength. You will not tired. You will not regret. You will not bite finger. The grace of the Lord will continue to be upon you. Pray God for praise. Pray for on behalf of our children that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that beyond human understanding, God will give to them in the name of Jesus Christ. All forces that may be against their sources, that may be against them going forward, that may be like a no in your family. This is it, this is it. We remove it in their life in the name of Jesus Christ. They will succeed. They will be leaders of leaders. They will be king of kings. They will be scientists of scientists. And they will be pastors, pastor of pastors. Let's pray for anointing of the Lord upon them. 
by the grace of the Lord, we continue to be upon them. Pray, pray that the grace of the Lord will be sufficient for us. Pray for that long run. By the time we shall meet at the feet of Jesus Christ, welcome my child. Welcome my daughter. Will be your portion. Will be my portion. And we will be able to tell each other, and you will be able to make it. That's why the family said, You are so foolish. But your foolishness have landed you in the kingdom of God. Friends say, You don't know what you are doing. But that ignorance have landed you in that mansion. Devil try to fool you that it doesn't matter. But you dare to the warning. And you stay faithful to the word of the Lord. And you measure it. By the time you measure, the measurement, the decision of taking the way of the Lord landed you in the kingdom of God. You will see me there. I will see you there. Pray for more anointing to increase the church. That work will give to you, that grace of the Lord will give to you. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, church will grow. And the mercy of the Lord will be upon us. In Jesus' name. Sister Priscilla, come and round up for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to worship in your house this evening. Thank you for the wonderful service that we had today. I pray to God that tomorrow morning we leave, that everything be safe. We have a safe journey going to our destination and returning home. I pray that we we'll continue to praise and bless God's holy name. For we need him so badly in this world today. So thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you have done for us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And our host. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>